Welcome to Dancing Moon Songcast. I'm Scott Simpson, casting from Dancing Moon Studio in Spearfish Canyon, on the north end of the Black Hills of South Dakota, right on the banks of the Spearfish Creek. If you'd like to follow along, you can download a free PDF from my lyric book from scottsimpsonmusic.com forward slash lyrics. And of course, you can find links to all my music there as well. So let's get casting and find out what song we're going to talk about this time. Well, in this episode, we've got a couple of uh, special things going on. Uh, Number one, this is number 5-0, the big 50, 50th uh, uh, episode of uh, Dance and Moon Songcast. And so that's kind of a big milestone. We're also just around the corner from having... uh, uh, having done this podcast for a full year, and um, we also have coming up uh, tomorrow, which uh, is July fourth, twenty twenty, on my calendar, um, we have the uh, uh, the pre release of my uh, my big album that I'm super excited about, Ozzy's Guitar Twenty Years Later. Um, a celebration of uh, the 20th anniversary of my very first album, Ozzy's Guitar, uh, wholly and completely reimagined songs. Uh, they're the same songs, uh, but, uh, but just um, really completely reimagined, uh, leaning on 20 years of, of, uh, of album making and, and uh, getting a little bit better in the studio and and, uh, and uh, additional experience as well. So all of that's happening. Um, and uh, what, what I've decided to do is uh, um, we're going to be, we're going to begin in, in maybe a month uh, after the release of Ozzy's Guitar 20 Years Later, uh, which is happening August 1st. Uh, I'll start some episodes at that point where we'll take a look at each of the 12 songs uh, on that album and talk about them. But up until that time, I think what we'll do is have a few episodes uh, that uh, deal with instrumental pieces. Um, I, If you've looked at any of my uh, catalog of music, I have a, a large number, at least a third, if not a little bit more than that, of uh, the music that I've, I've produced is, uh, is instrumental. Uh, some of it just instrumental albums, others uh, albums that were uh, soundtracks uh, for uh, some film work that I've done and some other things like that. So we're going to start with this 50th episode uh, just before the uh, pre-release sales of the new album. Uh, We're going to start do this. uh, This episode is going to be an all instrumental episode. And uh, very excited about, uh, I picked about three, uh, three instrumental pieces that uh, are unique and, and very varied. And um, we're going to listen to those and talk a little bit about them, uh, give a little context for, uh, for each song. Uh, we obviously won't be talking about lyrics, really, because there aren't any. Uh, so we're going to get started, and you can find this song, this first song, on uh, 2017's Reflections and Refugees, uh, which is really a, a compilation album of two two albums that were never actually released. Um, and so uh, this song is called Wake Up Jacob. We'll listen to it and talk a little bit about it on the other side.
Well, it's going to be a, a long episode, isn't it? That was a 10-minute song. Uh, Wake Up, Jacob. Um, so I've said before, and this is at the risk of, of people saying, as some have said, well, it's not prog rock. Well, okay, whatever you want to call it, I guess I, 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 I recorded it, I, I wrote it, I can call it, I guess, whatever I want to uh, call it. But I, I was and have been and am deeply influenced by some uh, bands that do some, that have done some really wonderful experimental sorts of things, some prog rock bands like, uh, like Yes um, and like others, uh, uh, Pink Floyd, um, um, uh, Rush, um, a number of a number of, of bands that I would I would consider at least prog rock in in some parts of their career, and that certainly was an influence on this song. Um, also, uh, the ambient um, bands that have come recently. What, the one that comes to mind that I was listening to a lot, I think, at the, around the time that I did this, uh, was Boards of Canada, um, and uh, I d- just that that wonderful. Um, that wonderful landscape of uh, of imagination um, that takes you uh, at least a number of different places on quite an adventure before the song is over. And of course, sometimes you need a 10-minute song to be able to do that sort of thing. Um, I did mention that uh, this album um, was a compilation of, of a couple of albums earlier that uh, actually were never released. Um, this song, Wake Up Jacob, um, I composed, uh, and recorded probably some, somewhere in the, um, 2009, 2010, 2011, uh, era, and, uh, had, com- had collected it in, uh, with some other songs, uh, and, and tentatively titled, um, Everything Under the Sun. Uh, which is a line uh, from Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament. Of course, this is a reference, Wake Up Jacob is a reference also to the Old Testament, to Jacob. Um, And if you recall, we won't go through the whole story, but Jacob uh, laid down and laid his head on a a rock um, and and fell asleep and had this uh, vision of a ladder. And we call it, for shorthand, Jacob's Ladder these days um, but but he had this vision of of angelic beings going up and down this ladder into heaven um, and, uh, and Jacob was such an interesting uh, patriarch and, and and character in the Old Testament um, he was certainly um, a respected patriarch but he uh, almost more than any of the other patriarchs was just a screw up just a guy who he cheated his brother. Um, he he lied um, and and had all kinds of problems. And not that other people in the Old Testament didn't have problems. But the interesting thing was, um, it seems to me that he was always uh, pursuing uh, pursuing this connection. And I wonder if it didn't start right here with this vision, this vision of of heaven opening up. And angelic uh, beings coming up and down, this vision that he has. And then later, uh, you know, we have another scene later in life after he's done a whole lot of, you know, stuff that he's somewhat ashamed of where he is wrestling with, and, and it's a little unclear whether he's wrestling with an angel or literally wrestling with God. And he won't let go of this being, and he says, "You have to bless me." And so he gets a blessing, but he he also uh, his hip is wrenched out of place, and he walks with a limp the rest of his life. But he's wanting this connection, this connection with God, this connection with the heavens that were opened up to him in this in this early vision of this ladder, this staircase going up and down to heaven and, and back. And, and so that's what sparked the song. And you, you hear the, that kind of the climbing, the, 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 the going through a scale. Dum, 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 dum. It's the bass and it's the, 
the electric guitar and 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 all that climbing and but it's 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 set in a in a very um ambient and spacious uh, there's even some crickets in there I'm, I'm using some some sound effect things as well um it, it's 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 this nighttime vision uh, and then it bursts into the into the music the kind of the lovelier part of the song um where you, and I and I imagine the, these bright lights and this beauty, but then we get into the the harder, darker, harsher where we we have some kind of some, almost some metal guitar going on, and we have uh, the recording that I used. Uh, it, it's it's a I think probably an, a nineteen eighties era uh, recording um, of of a, a, an automated voice. A computerized automated voice um, uh, coming on when when the line is isn't available. Um, uh, uh, hold you'll, you'll uh, your your call will be answered when the line is available. Uh, please hold your call will be answered when the line is available. And it's this idea of, of of just desiring this deep connection, but but not quite getting it. Not quite something is blocking that. Something is blocking that, and so in the in the song in the piece we go through that a couple of different times until we get to the end, and all that's left is the line is available, the line is available, the line is available, fading out. Um, so anyway, um, the, this this um, as I said, the original uh, would have been an EP uh called everything under the sun was was going to be based on uh, several songs and 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 i did compose all these songs they they are part of this uh, album uh now uh reflections and refugees that that i put together uh remastered and put together in uh, 2017 um of songs uh based on stories from the old testament um that's not all that's on of reflections and refugees. There's also another, another uh, set of of songs, another album that didn't a- ever meet the light of day. That uh, is is part of that as well. I'm sure we'll talk about that in another episode. Um, so anyway, so there's our first song, one that is kind of um, ambient, maybe maybe prog rock, if you'll let me use that term, um, but definitely experimental and exploratory. Um, and uh, and just a, a, a whole lot of fun uh, to work on for me. Uh, so our next song is going to come from uh, an album called uh, Two Weeks in April. This is a short song. I figured we'd follow the uh, the long one with a with a shorter, much shorter song. Um, this album uh, also came out in 2017 and it was a series of basically improvised, uh, instrumentals, uh, recorded, um, kind of field recording style, um, with, a with an iPad. Um, and, uh, and so I, I would sit down in a different place in, in my house or near my house outside in some cases and improvise a piece and then name it once I was done. And so this one we're going to listen to is called Saturday Morning. And this, once again, is from two weeks in April from 2017. So, Saturday Morning. Thank you. 
I distinctly remember the uh, the Saturday morning that uh, that inspired that song. Partly because I uh, I also video recorded it, so I, I I can go back and look at it. But uh, I was sitting in our living room area, and it was just a, a just a, a stunning, beautiful morning, and the sun was just coming up, peeking up over the top of the canyon and down into the canyon. And it was warm, and it was sunny, and it was April at the end of a, of a winter, you know, spring coming on. And, uh, and it was just the epitome of what you want a, a Saturday morning to be. I remember wonderful Saturday mornings as a child waking up and realizing, hey, I don't have to go to school. And, of course, there were cartoons on TV, and there was mom would always make some kind of a good breakfast and... And, uh, and there wasn't anything that, I ha- that had to be done. Um, and there was lots of playing that could happen. And, and just, just being, being warm, just woken up, still in my pajamas, um, something funny on TV, eating something yummy for breakfast, you know. A nice, nice feel. We don't get that as much as adults. It seems like my my Saturdays quite often are like uh, they're kind of busy. They're almost as busy, if not more busy, than uh, the work days. And sometimes the busyness is our own fault, you know. Sometimes we're in such a rush to plan a great, exciting weekend that we just busy ourselves with it. So, anyway... A short song, uh, a nice song, uh, once again, Saturday Morning, and that is on uh, 2017's Two Weeks in April. So our next song um, is a song that has kind of a a long uh, history, Um, and uh, and it begins um, in uh, around the same time that a lot of these... um, the songs that we've done today uh, began that, especially that la- uh, the the first one, um, probably around two thousand nine, um, maybe two thousand eight. Actually, probably two thousand eight. And I'll tell you why. Um, from two thousand seven to two thousand eight, that school year, uh, we moved to Grand Junction, Colorado, and I taught high school again. I had done that years and years and years earlier, but I did it one more time convinced myself I did not want to teach high school anymore, and, uh, and then we moved back to Spearfish. Um, however, uh, it was a wonderful year, um, a hard year, but it was a good year. I had wonderful students, and uh, we did a lot of creative writing together. Uh, in fact, I had decided that one day out of the week in my class would be uh, basically devoted to creative writing. Their ideas, my ideas. I'm also a strong believer that the teacher should be writing along with the students. And so there was a lot of short story writing and a lot of poetry writing and all of that. And, um, and I wrote a poem, uh, improvised kind of a poem, during one of those writing days with my high school students. And it was called The Five to Nine Diner. And it was kind of a strange, weird poem about a guy who was kind of paranoid um, that someone was trying to kill him. And, and uh, he goes into this diner, and this uh, waitress gives him uh, his coffee, and, and he wants cream, and she brings him the little, the little holders of cream. And, uh, but but he, he, he's concerned because he, he feels like the, the seals on the cream containers are, are, are already unsealed, that maybe something has been has happened and something's been done to them and what 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 has she done um and so anyway it was this strange kind of interesting poem um but when i got when i when i moved back to spearfish um i had this notebook of these things these little bits and pieces of things that i had written with my students there and i thought you know i'm going to take these into the studio and see what i can do with music and so what I did, I didn't turn them into songs, no. That would be, that would be too easy. <laughs> what I did is I tried to c- compose music to go behind a reading of the poem, which is a, there's a, there's a strong tradition of that. Um, 
However, I'm not sure exactly how well it worked for these particular poems and the particular music I composed to go behind them. But what happened, um, I, I put together this album and it's, it's, it's basically uh, uh, me speaking um, and the music behind it. And, uh, and uh, you know what, it, maybe one day I'll release that. But what I did rather than releasing it is I just kind of sat on it. And then a few years later, as I began doing some work in film, um, and there was a need for some, uh, some uh, music for a background of a film that I had written the script for, a film that you can still see. It's called uh, Teaching From Within. It's about teaching. Um, but this song, the instrumental version of it, with the, the, the poem stripped out, um, became... Uh, one of the one of the pieces that was a, a fundamental piece in part of the part of the film, and so um, this five to nine diner that we will listen to next was originally a part of that uh, that earliest uh, album that never happened, and uh, that one was called uh, Seven Years Mirror House Poet. Mirror House Poet was kind of the name of the band, which was just me, uh, seven years. Um, and, uh, and then eventually became part of this, uh, of the soundtrack for uh, the film, uh, Teaching From Within. Um, so the version that we're going to listen to it can actually be found on a 2015 compilation album, uh, instrumental compilation album that I put together called the Road Behind. Um, so we'll go ahead and listen to Five to Nine Diner from The Road Behind from 2015.
proud of that song. I love that. I, you know, I get what I was doing in both uh, Wake Up Jacob and in uh, that uh, uh, Five to Nine Diner. Um, a lot of stuff with um, with interesting rhythms, with with rhythmical uh, variations, um, and and beginning a pattern and then interrupting that pattern with a different pattern. Um, some dissonances and uh, and just uh, just a landscape that's really um, in in my mind just really vivid and really uh, prickly, if that makes any sense. Um, not not something you just r- relax into as a soothing soothing background, but something that's 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 saying, "Hey, look over here. Hey, what if we do this? Hey, what if this happens? Hey." Um, I started out with that song, um, really aiming for a kind of a cinematic film noir sort of feel. Um, uh, it's got that brass in there. It's dark. It's uh, it's uh, it's minor. Um, it's it's uh, and then and then when it really breaks loose for me, uh, it just it, it it the first time I did it, you know, because when, when I'm composing this way, I'm. I'm really improvising with myself and, and just kind of laying something down and then laying something down on top of it and then seeing what might happen if I do this. Uh, the breakthrough with the, uh, with the harmonica, just, just uh, where that harmonica kicks in. And then, and then I brought in the mandolin, which should not fit in that kind of a, of a piece, but it just, it was, it, it just, it was exactly what I what I wanted. Once I had it there, I couldn't imagine doing it any other way. So, um, uh, five to nine diner. Um, and just really, really pleased with that song. I really can just still. I uh, don't get tired of it. I can just I can just kind of put it on and jam with it. It's very meditational 
in a way, not in a soothing way, in a it takes me places kind of way. So there we have it. Three uh, instrumental pieces, uh, three different instrumental pieces. We tapped in a little bit to uh, the the ambient, uh, sort of uh, current ambient uh, genre, uh, some prog rock, I would, I would suggest. Certainly some instrumental soundtrack, a um, uh, little soothing piece there in the middle for Saturday mornings. And, um, and it's just good to be uh, able to stretch outside. Uh, I'm so glad that I am such an indie person that I, I'm, I'm not stuck beholden to a particular genre. I can kind of just play around and see where it takes me. Thank you for playing uh, today with me with this uh, this episode and and uh, and joining me on the little ride here. Uh, we uh, come out with a new episode of Dance and Moon Songcast every Friday. Um, like I said, I've got a big big album release just about to hit. Um, it'll be the pre-order uh, for the album will be coming uh, uh, just uh, tomorrow uh, on the on the fourth of July. And the title of that album is Ozzy's Guitar, 20 Years Later. Um, super excited for you to hear that. Uh, it'll be released everywhere, the entire album, on August 1st, 2020. Um, once again, you can find all my music, all my lyrics at scottsimpsonmusic.com. And uh, thank you again for joining me on, uh, on this weekly journey called Dancing Moon Songcast. Be well. <laughs>